prisoners on the Isle of Wight are being given lessons on how to manage their money by Barclays Bank. Customer service representatives are visiting inmates to teach them how to look after their finances once they're released in the hope that it will reduce their chances of reoffending. The scheme is being organised by the National Association of Reformed Offenders, otherwise known as Unlock, an independent charity led by reformed offenders. Unlocked Project Director Chris Bath joins me on the phone now. Chris, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Tell me a bit about this scheme. How does it work? Well, we identified this quite a long time ago, actually. Back, back in 2004, we started to get phone calls from our members who are, are people who've left prison and decided to, to, to lead, a, lead a positive life. And they were actually saying that... Um, uh, they, although they could find employment, employers who would take them on despite their past, they couldn't take them on until they had a bank account. So we started to work around the issue of getting people bank accounts before they left prison. And I guess the logic is that if you gave someone a car without any driving lessons, then it might seem very generous, but you'd end up putting them in more danger than they were in the first place. Mm. So quickly moved on to the idea that... Um, Actually, it was very important that people had appropriate skills to be able to use sort of modern financial services. Uh, it, it may seem very strange to, to sort of people listening out there, but a lot of people don't actually know how to use a cash machine, for instance, um, and these are quite crucial skills. Is it difficult getting bank accounts for people in prison? Is there, is there a flip side to that, a bit of a catch-22, or is that part fairly straightforward? It's a really difficult thing, to be honest, uh, to do. Um, I think I think we're, we're all familiar with the fact now that if anybody tries to do anything uh, for people who are in prison, then uh, in terms of some parts of the, the media and the, the press particularly, people can get can get very upset. Mm. Um, so it can be very difficult. Um, the, the banks are, you know, a little bit scared in some cases. Barclays, fortunately, not so. Um, but one of the big issues, of course, is ID. If you or I sort of wanted to open up a bank account, we'd first of all walk down to the bank, which is something a prisoner can't do, and then we'd probably hand over a passport or a driving licence, which a prisoner wouldn't have, and we'd probably hand over some utility bills. And, of course, prisoners don't have those either. So um, you have to, have to create some sort of uh, some good systems to make that work. What kind of education, then, are you giving to the, the inmates as well? You, you say um, many of them don't know how to use something as simple as, as a cash machine. Do you have a, a dummy cash machine that you're taking into prisons? Uh, not a physical one, but a virtual one. So we just created a computer program that mimics exactly what a, a cash machine uh, does. We had uh, one instance back, well, probably about 2005, where a guy, a guy in his sort of late 50s uh, was, was in one of the sessions, and uh, he said that the last time that he'd come out of prison, uh, someone had set him up with a bank account, but they hadn't told him how to use it. And mm. uh, when he went to the branch, they told him he wasn't allowed to use the counter. So he went to go and use a cash machine. And uh, he said he got to the front and very embarrassed. He said that he actually just made the noises that a cash machine made because he didn't know how to use it, no literacy, never used anything computerised before. And he said, I went round the corner and I used some skills I did have to get some money and he sold a bit of marijuana on the street, ended up back in prison, probably cost the taxpayer about £100,000 because well, he didn't know how to use a cash machine. I was going to ask you a little bit about this. I've just finished reading about um, the, the broken windows idea that they used to reduce crime in New York in the, in the 90s, whereby they would clean up graffiti and they'd repair broken windows to, to try and, you know, little measures like that would stop crime and, and criminals. And is it a case, have you found, that if you teach criminals these basic life skills and help them to readjust to life outside of prison, that it, it decreases the chances of them reoffending. The biggest problem we've got in this country is that if somebody chooses to leave crime behind, if they choose to join us and get a job and get a house, we still put all the barriers in the way that stop them getting things. We, they find it difficult to get a bank account, to get insurance, to get a place to stay, to get a job. So... What you've got to remember is that when a person chooses to not go back to a kind of criminal gang, if we're all turning our backs on them and saying we're not interested in you, then they're only left with one option. Mm. Um, so it's about personal responsibility. If you, and, and if you can train people up in the skills so that they're strong and they know what to do and they know how to do it and the doors are open to them, uh, then, then you know, they, they'll take the right path. Chris, I appreciate you taking the time to speak to us this afternoon. That's Chris Bath there from the uh, charity Unlock, the National Association of Reformed Offenders. <laughs>